Hello there, good day. This is your Sir Paul and today, let's learn all about combinations of capacitors. I would like to recognize the reference book that I've used for this video. It's Exploring Life Through Science series, General Physics 2 by Phoenix Publishing. Now, before learning about combinations of capacitors, make sure that you know the basics of capacitors, especially like its parts and on how to calculate for the capacitance of a given capacitor. As well as, you need to know about the different factors that affect the capacitance of a certain capacitor. With that then, let's learn more about combinations of capacitors. As you have known from our previous lesson, capacitors are one of the important elements in an electrical circuit. And just like any element in the electrical circuit, it can be connected in either series or parallel fashion. Let's learn more about the two types of connections. First, the series combination. The series combination may be likened or analogous to people standing in a straight line. When you see people standing in a straight line, you notice that the arrangement of people is one after the other. This is the same thing as in series combinations. Now, let's learn more about the characteristics of series combinations of capacitors. If you look closely, the series combination only has one path for charges to flow, starting from one terminal to another terminal of the voltage source. For that reason, capacitors in series acquire the same charge and are equivalent to each other and equal to the total charge in the circuit. In series, capacitors have different capacitances and potential difference or voltage between plates. Usually, combinations of electrical components follow certain rules. For capacitors in series, the total charge Q is equal to the charges of each capacitor. The total voltage V is equal to the sum of the individual voltages of capacitors. And for the total capacitance, it is calculated by getting the sum of the reciprocal of individual capacitances and its reciprocal again after. Now let's go to parallel combinations. Parallel combinations may be usually likened to rows of chairs that you see from the side view of a classroom. If you try to notice the rows of chairs arranged in a classroom from the side view of that space or that area, you notice that chairs start from either from left to right or the other way around, right to left. That is also the same principle or the same thing that happens in electrical components connected in parallel connection. Usually, they are connected across. When we say across, something starts from the left to the right or the other way around. Now, let's learn more about the characteristics of parallel connection of capacitors. Looking into illustrations for parallel capacitors, you notice that there are several paths or loops for charge to transfer from one terminal to another. In parallel combination, all capacitors are connected to the same terminals. With this, capacitors in parallel have the same potential difference or voltage between the plates and it is also equal to the total voltage of the circuit. The following relationships apply for parallel capacitors. The total charge Q is equal to the sum of the individual capacitances of each capacitor. The total voltage V is equal in all capacitors since they are connected to the same 
terminals and the total capacitance C is equal to the sum of the individual capacitances of each capacitor. These are the relationships due to the fact that all capacitors are connected to the same terminals. Now let's try some problem solving items. The problem now says we are given three capacitors with the following value of their capacitance. For number one, 10 farads. For number two, 5 farads. And for number three, 4 farads. Now we are to find the total capacitance for each connection that is shown in the diagram below. We now start solving for letter A. In diagram A, capacitors are connected in series. And to get the total capacitance in series, we now get the reciprocal of the sum of the reciprocals of the given capacitances. Thus, our formula will be 1 over C total is now equal to the sum of the reciprocals of the individual given capacitances. Substituting the given values for C1, 2, and 3, we now have 1 over 10 farads plus 1 over 5 farads plus 1 over 4 farads. What we do now with this is we divide 1 by 10, 1 by 5, and 1 by 4.0. That now gives us 0 0.10, 0 0.20, and 0 0.25 respectively, now all over the unit of farads. Now, from that point, we add the values, thus we now get 0 0.55 over farads. And then from that point, we need to get the reciprocal of 0 0.55 over farads that will now give us 1 over 0 0.55. 1 divided by 0 0.55 is equal to 1.8 farads. That is now the total capacitance of the capacitors in diagram letter A. Now, for diagram letter B, the capacitors are connected in parallel. Therefore, to get the total capacitance, we just get the sum of the values of the given capacitances. So, therefore, we just add 10 farads plus 5 farads plus 4 farads, and that now equals to 19 farads, the total capacitance for diagram letter B. And now for diagram C, it shows to us a combined series and parallel connection. So with that problem, what we do is we combine part by part up until we end up with either series or parallel. We analyze by looking into the illustration which pair of capacitors will we combine first. The diagram tells us that C1 and C2 are connected in series. Therefore, we combine them first, thus having now the value of C1 plus 2. Since they are connected in series, we follow the rules in series in calculating the total capacitance. Therefore, we add the reciprocals of the values of C1 and C2. So we now have 1 over 10 farads plus 1 over 5 farads. We now divide 1 by 10 and 1 by 5. We now have then 0 0.10 over 1 farads plus 0 0.20 over 1 farad. Getting the sum of those values, we now get 0 0.30 over 1 farad. Getting the reciprocal of that, we now have 1 over 0 0.30. 1 divided by 0 0.30 is equal to 3.3 farads. So the combined value of C1 and C2 is now equal to 3.3 farads. Since C1 and C2 is now combined, and we see in the diagram that it is parallel to C3, Therefore, to get the total capacitance, we just add the values of C1 plus 2 and C3. So we now add 3.3 farads plus 4.0 farads, thus giving us the total capacitance of 7.3 farads.
Now, to practice further, answer the following problems. You may send your answers in your respective GCs or your teacher to check properly your answers. And that's all for today's topic. Until our next one, remember, always stay safe.